All right, hey guys, what's up? It's Nigel again, and uh, today I got another movie review for you all. All this is going to be a review of uh, this lady right here, Captain Marvel. Oh, so uh, as always, of course, I'm not a professional oh, movie reviewer, I'm just a man who enjoys a good time. And uh, I gotta say, with this movie, I had a pretty decent time. Now, uh, the thing about Captain Marvel, oh, and uh, why I kind of had some reservations going into it. A lot of people who have said that um, out of all the MCU films, Captain Marvel was among one of the weakest. It's um, definitely not the worst, or, uh, but definitely not the best. But I was hoping it would at least be a pretty good movie, and I gotta say it was for the most part. Now, there were, of course, some things about the movie that uh, bothered me, but... Overall, I think it was a pretty decent experience. So, without um, well, further ado, let's get right into it. So, of course, we do pros and cons here uh, when talking about the movie. And we'll see if the pros outweigh the cons. So, uh, what I liked about the movie, what I didn't like about the movie. But starting off with what I liked about the movie, I think uh, Brie E. Lawson did a uh, pretty decent job as Carol Danvers slash Captain Marvel, and uh, her powers seemed pretty cool as well. Oh, and I uh, liked how, oh, of course, with the MCU, uh, the interwoven storytelling, uh, this one is pretty much about her relationship with Nick Fury as a court horse um, at the end of Avengers Infinity War, we saw her symbol come up on on a uh, transmitter that Nick Fury had, at pretty much calling her. So this pretty much went into it. Although honestly, I feel like this probably should have been the next movie in the MCU instead of Ant Man and the Wasp. Don't get me wrong, I love Ant Man and the Wasp. It's a really solid movie, but um, in terms of what the what what I've uh, preferred that movie versus Captain Marvel to be next up. I think I probably would have went with Captain Marvel as as uh it goes right from there into Captain Marvel. Of course, we saw the teaser at the end of the post credit scene, and then it goes right into Captain Marvel. <laughs> and then it also probably would have worked out for Ant Man as uh in uh, Ant Man the Wasp post credit scene. We saw, uh, of course, um, Hank Pym, uh, Hope, and uh, Janet all turn into dust because of Thanos' you know, snap. So, oh, then seeing Scott in Endgame, I mean, that would have made that I think would have been a good transition as well. Oh, here he is, his um, his like friends and loved ones pretty much get turned to dust. Now here he is in Endgame. So I think that would have been a uh, good transition as well. Although oh the Captain Marvel movie at the end also transitions her into Endgame. But uh, on the whole, I did like I uh, did like the movie and Re Lawson as Captain Marvel was pretty good for the most part. Um, what else I do like how oh it shows the Kree at first as you know good guys and which may confuse some people because Ronan was Kree he, in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and he was evil but then we see he uh, in the movie that the Kree actually are bad guys so oh I thought that was a pretty interesting way of going about it how. Oh, we see Captain Marvel starting off with the Kree, and then, and she turns against the Kree when uh, they do some, when it's revealed that they did some shady stuff to her. But we also get the scrolls in this movie now. Uh, the scrolls are usually portrayed as a uh, evil entity as well. Oh, but to see them portrayed as more the good guys, more like a good entity, I thought was interesting in, in this movie. I didn't hate it, but um, I just thought it was kind of interesting. But we probably will see a more villainous scroll come up in the Fantastic Four movie, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Hopefully, he is in the Fantastic Four movie, though. And uh, I do like how we had S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, as well. We had, of course, young Nick Fury, young Phil Coulson, and, and we saw all that... Uh, we saw them interacting with Captain Marvel slash Carol Danvers 
turned out actually was from Earth before she was taken uh, by the Kree, and then to see her make her way back to Earth, Earth I thought that was uh, pretty interestingly done. And the characters that are shown in Captain Marvel, to see where they end up, up to see them here was, was kind of interesting as well. We He had a uh, Ronin, of course, and I do like that Ronin's costume in this movie, he, how he appears, is more of his uh, actual comic design. It's more of the green with the symbol on the front, uh, not like the Guardians of the Galaxy movie where it's black with the red design. No, here it's green and everything, and Ronin, of course, looks younger. Then there's uh, Korath, the guy who... Uh, ran into Star-Lord at the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy. We see him here as well. Also, seeing these characters uh, appear here and then coming back is is uh, kind of interesting, kind of uh, cool to see. And uh, um, Captain Marvel's powers, I think, were done pretty well. Of course, the phone, the photon blast. I do like also how there's the other Captain Marvel there, aka Photon, uh, Maria, and uh, Monica Ram Rambo. Oh, I apologize, I pronounced the name wrong. Of course, uh, Monica is the one who becomes Photon, but uh, Maria, her mom, we see how her and. Uh, Carol Danvers interact, so I thought that was pretty cool. Well, and uh, it, it will be even more interesting because they're gonna be in an upcoming, I believe it's either gonna be like a full fledged movie or a Disney Plus show. Oh, uh, pretty much the Marvels, which is gonna be uh, Carol Danvers and uh, Photon, aka uh, Monica Rambeau, and uh, Kamala Khan, the uh, new Miss Marvel. <clears throat> now for what I didn't like about the movie, and of course the big one, Nick Fury's eye. Now, Nick Fury does, of course, in the MCU have the eye patch, and of course it's all scratched out, it's all gross. But how they went about explaining it in the movie, I think, was a disservice. Now, oh, uh, in my Uncharted review that also came out today, if you haven't already, go check that out. Oh, um, I talked about how... Oh, sometimes when changes are made, it's not really a bad thing, unless it's to the detriment. And here, I feel like it was a huge detriment and a huge disservice to Nick Fury. Pretty much the mystique of what happened to his eye. And this is a case where in the comics, it's a lot cooler. So in the comics, his eye was shot out by his brother, her Joseph, who was a Hydra agent. And uh, I think that would have been a much better narrative. But then what we got here, where it's scratched out by the Flurkin, and it really, really uh, dismantles a lot of Nick Fury's credibility. Like, this is how he lost his eye? From a, from a cat? Now, oh, trust me, cat scratches are no joke. Oh, cat scratches can be pretty nasty, and honestly, any scratch from any animal, if it's deep enough. But to see it here is like, uh, it was such, it felt like such a big letdown. I feel like having uh, the original uh, story of how he lost his eye by it being shot by his brother... I think would have made for a much better narrative, or e even, even okay, let's do it like this, because the Skrulls are invading, so it takes the secret invasion uh, storyline the movie does, have his eye be shot out by one of the agents who was secretly a Skrull. There we go, that's, that's still an honorable way to lose your eye, but no, scratched by the Florkin, so I really didn't like that. And the other thing that kind of confused me is that this takes place in uh, 1996, and Carol Danvers is, I believe, like 25, if I'm not mistaken, at the time of the movie, which takes place in 96. So that's like 20-something years by the time we reach Endgame, which takes place in present day. Hey, how does she still look the same? She should look uh, noticeably older. Now, there's some people, once a blue moon, you get some people who age really well. Of course, you know, black don't crack, but um, there's some people who do age pretty well where it's not noticeable, but it, it, even sometimes they do still have some noticeable 
couple uh, differences, but uh, with Captain Marvel, nope, she still pretty much looks the same, except she's got the uh, shorter hair that she does in the comics, of course. So, well, what's the deal with that? It'll probably be explained by the time we get to Endgame, but uh, other than that, and I think it was a pretty decent movie, like I said, it was a pretty uh, good movie, I liked it, I didn't hate it, but uh, I liked it, not my favorite MCU movie, but not my uh, least favorite either so far, and um, of course once I do finish the MCU, because that was one of the main reasons why I was watching Captain Marvel was to finish off the entire MCU I said I wanted to. I was supposed to do it at the end of last year, but I didn't wind up finishing it, it uh, last year. I'm going to finish it this year. But uh, once I do finish up the MCU, what I want to do is a uh, MCU retrospective talking about the entire MCU as a whole well, and my thoughts on it, my favorite, least favorite movies. So uh, once I do finish the MCU, I will definitely do that for you guys. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the Captain Marvel movie. Did you like it, dislike it? Uh, one of my friends, this is her, she said this is her favorite movie from the MCU. But uh, what'd you guys think of it? Uh, let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys later. Peace.